What's up YouTube? Honeybee here bringing you a new Mortal Kombat 1 video. In this video we're going to be doing an advanced reptile guide. Everything you guys need to know about playing reptile at a high level. Huge shout outs to all you guys that's been coming through the Twitch streams. We crushed the sub goal to make this guide. So huge shout outs to you guys for supporting the streams. I do appreciate it. We're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Reptile. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Honeybee. I'm a top player in Mortal Kombat and Injustice titles. I've been competing in these games for about the past 10 years. And in the newest iteration of Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 1, I've taken a liking to Reptile. Now, a lot of people don't really use him, especially at high level, because he's generally seen as a lower tier character. But I've been enjoying him and I've been finding some things that work. So we're going to be going over that in this guide today. Maybe you've seen me do some cool stuff. Maybe you've seen me do some combos like, like this one, that we're getting a 45% for a mid-screen combo with Reptile. And generally, you don't really see a Reptile getting that type of damage. Maybe you've seen some cool combos with Reptile that I've been doing that ends in an invisibility setup. And you're just thinking, I've been trying to do this, but I just can't get the timing down. I don't, I don't know what buttons I'm supposed to be pressing at what time in order to get that cameo to, to link properly. I've seen comments about that a lot. So in this guide, I'm going to be talking about basically everything. I'll talk about the timings of calling your cameos to get certain of these combos. I'm going to be talking about a basic breakdown of his moves and strings. I'm going to be talking about the special moves that he has. And then I'm going to be talking about some ways you want to approach neutral with this character in general matches and some cameo options that he has and some combo options that he has. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot of stuff to digest over here. But if you guys are interested in playing Reptile or maybe you're interested in just learning a little bit more about the character, you've come to the right place. So first of all, let's talk about Reptile's moves. We're going to talk about his basic attacks, and we're going to talk about his strings that you're generally going to be using when you're playing this character. So for Reptile, his best basic attacks, you know, he has his pokes, as everyone does. Um, his down one is seven frames. It's pretty quick. I will also say, as we're talking about this guide, um, it is important that you guys understand button notation and what I'm talking about. So I'm using a standard PS5 controller. One is square, all right? Two is triangle. Three is X. Four is circle. And the uh, notations for an Xbox controller, that's all going to be in the description. So check it out. I'm going to be using this type of terminology when we're talking about down ones, down twos, threes, fours, forward, back, threes, fours, all that type of stuff. So it's important that you guys understand that, but let's continue. These are some of the moves that you're really gonna be using with Reptile. Back three, that's one of his best moves. It's a 16 frame startup low attack that can lead into combos if you hit confirm with the back three one. All right, that's gonna be a very important move. You can hit that into a special move with a force ball. His 4-2 uh, is his fastest mid-string. It's 12 frames, so it's decently quick. Not the greatest range in the world, but it's it's pretty decent. So you can do a 4-2-1 on hit. You can confirm that into a force ball to get combos. He also has uh, his stand one. 1-1 one, one is a pretty good stagger option. 1-1 one, one is zero on block. If you complete the string, 1-1-4, one, one, it's minus seven, so it's generally safe, but you can't special cancel it. If you have the right cameos, you can get some combos out of it. He has a stand three, which has some great range on it. It's negative seven with pushback, uh, so it's pretty much safe if you're using it from uh, max range. Even if you're using it from close range, only characters with a six frame would be able to punish it. So it's, it's generally a, a pretty safe move. His sweep, back four, one of in my opinion, one of the best sweeps in the game. It has some great range on it. See how far you can hit them with. And he stays back to where he was. So great for pushback, great for spacing. You're going to want to be using that a lot. Those are the main stuff. He does have a 4-3 uh, as well, but it's a high attack. Might not be as useful. Generally, the back three might be a little bit better to be using. Um, so you're generally looking at back three, back four, four to one. 
or 1-1 one, one, as like your general moves you're going to be uh, going to a lot with sometimes throwing in a stand 3 here and there. That's generally with the moves that you're going to be using with this character. He does also have uh, an overhead, by the way. It's, it's punishable when he does his regular overhead, 19 frames, minus 13 on block. It is punishable. If you charge it a little bit, you hold back 2. It's negative 7, which is generally safe. 33 starter frames, so it's quite slow, um, and it just knocks them down if you uh, hit them. So, splat, splat, right? But he can charge it the full length, and if you do, it becomes a launching overhead. Now, you're going to get some pretty decent damage out of this because you can follow up for a combo. Um, you can also be safe if they do block this because it's negative three on block, but it's quite slow and it's very, very reactable. Now you can actually cancel this move into uh, spit if you're holding back N2 and then down forward one to do the spit. You can cancel into invisibility if you're holding back N2 and then you do down up four for invisibility. You can also cancel this into his low which is back forward four. For some reason, you can't cancel this into his uh, some of his other special moves. We'll, we'll go over those. But you can't cancel it into the force ball, and you can't cancel it into his reptile dash. So make note of that. Another move that he does have that is going to be useful, mainly in terms of punishing and extending combos, is going to be his 2-3 or his 4-2-3. Both of these options are very punishable on block, so you're not gonna wanna do that on block. You're only gonna wanna do that to extend combos. Now, in terms of his special moves, he has his Acid Spit, down forward one. It's a, a high projectile with decent range on it. Generally, I will say it's not that useful. Um, if you amplify it, it, does, um, it becomes a mid that has quite good range. It can hit all the way from, from over here. So quite good range when you think about it. You only, you're you hitting from roughly 70% of the screen, but generally speaking, it's not that useful. Uh, an enhanced force ball is generally better. Um, you also have your reptile dash, which uh, covers a good amount of the screen. Very punishable if your opponent blocks it, so you don't want to use it on block, really. Um, you also can amplify it, and if you amplify it, he runs through them and it's an overhead attack that is safe on block. Now, your opponent could flawless block and punish this. I'll just set the AI. And we're gonna have the AI block. So if you block it, you flawless block it, it becomes negative 10. And then you can punish it. So at higher levels, it will um, it won't be as good because you're spending a bar to then get potentially punished. Also, there is the option to armor through this. So at higher levels, is generally not as good of a move to be throwing out there. But at lower levels, generally people don't really do that much about it. So depending on the level that you're at and the people that you're playing against, it's something to consider. Now, he also has uh, this other move that we didn't talk about as much, but it's 4 2 2 one, uh, four, two, one, one and it's for 3 one, one They both end the same. They're uh, not special cancelable strengths, but uh, you can combo with the right cameo. For example, Scorpion will launch there. Um, but it is also important to note that on block, this string is safe at negative seven, but if your opponent flaws blocks the end of it, it becomes negative 17 and it becomes highly punishable. So that's also another string that you don't want to be using too much at a high level in case your opponents um, are ready to flaws block and punish you. Uh, the same can be said with his back three one string. The back three one string does have a, a gap between this, which can be armored through and punished. So that you also have to look out for that when you're uh, playing some of these guys that at high level, which all kind of goes into part of the reason why Reptile's not as good because of some of these gaps in his offense. Now, um, now in terms of other moves that he has, he has, um, yeah, he has this dash, right? He has the, the uh, enhanced dash. 
He has this gator uh, roll slide in low profiles and has a pretty good range. Not full screen, but about 80% of the screen. Highly punishable if blocked, and if you enhance it, he does get a hit of armor for it. So that's his armor attack. It's, it's kind of slow at 21 frames, so not the greatest thing in the world, but it's definitely usable. Uh, and then he has invisibility. Down, He has invisibility, which is down up four. Uh, makes him fully invisible after activating for a little bit. He, If he gets hit or if he blocks anything, he loses the invisibility. He also has an enhanced version of this, which does absolutely nothing at this point in, in the game. So don't use it. You're just going to waste a bar. He has force balls. He has a regular version, a far version, and he has a, a close version, none of which will go full screen. But if you amplify the ball, it will travel further and it'll go about the full screen length. If you, you can do a, a normal one, you can do a, an enhanced fast one, and you can do an enhanced slow one. The great thing about enhanced slow ones is you can actually use it and have it behind you to kind of protect you in a way. And you can use that to get some good chip outs on your on your opponents in some situations, and you can use it to get in and do a more safe mix of sorts. That was actually not a real combo, by the way, in case you guys were wondering. Um, so yeah, those are a lot of things to uh, take note with him. Another thing to uh, that's very important for you guys to know, you can do a force ball, and if you do another force ball at the same speed, it won't pop them up. But you can do two regular force balls in a combo as long as you're doing two different force balls. So if I'm doing a far force ball and then a regular force ball, they'll pop up. Far force ball and a slow force ball, they'll pop up. But if I'm doing two far force balls, they don't pop up. If you do a far force ball into an, an enhanced force ball, that enhanced force ball will always pop up. So I can do a far force ball, regular force ball, enhanced force ball, and then they'll just keep popping up. So in a combo, especially in the corner, you could do up to five force balls if you're doing different kinds. For example, if I'm doing three enhanced force balls and then a regular force ball and a slow force ball, you can get five force balls and pop them up five times. Like that. Now, generally speaking, this isn't something you're going to want to do a lot, but sometimes the situation might call for it where you need to get that damage and you want to kill your opponent or you just want to be stylish at the end of a, of, of a round. So the option is there to do that. Now, another move that he has is this air falling fangs. It's an overhead attack. He can only do it while airborne. It does 8% damage. If you amplify it, it does a little bit extra damage, does 11% damage. And one thing that some people don't know is if you amplify this move, that actually does have a hit of armor as well. Now you can't use this as a wake up attack because you can only do this when you're airborne. But there are some situations you can do to uh, make use of the armor. For example, so. All right, it's gonna wake up with armor. I took that hit. My armor actually took a hit there, and I was able to uh, get him. And especially when you're invisible, that can definitely throw some people off. So now that we covered basically all of his moves and special moves, let's talk a little bit about the neutral game, how you want to approach a lot of these uh, matches with Reptile. Generally speaking, one of his best tools is his Force Balls. These are uh, pretty good projectiles, considering that they are mids. They have to be blocked or flawless blocked. They do pop up when you hit someone with it. So sometimes if you trade projectiles, you can take a hit from a projectile, get somewhat staggered, but then your opponent will get hit, launched, and then you can follow up 
for an, for an attack. So generally, these force balls are very good. So the thing that does somewhat suck about the force balls is you can't be too obvious with it. Opponents can jump these force balls and punish you from pretty far range in this game. For example, if they're doing something like this, right? They're just going back, chucking force balls. You can be back there and still come come over, right? This is like just a little bit less than full screen. Like, you know, even from here, a good jump over will will punish you. So you can't be too obvious with the force balls. Sometimes you're gonna have to take it easy, right? If they're if they're continuously trying to jump over your stuff, then you're gonna have to start using anti airs. What are reptiles' best anti airs? Well, if your opponent starts jumping at you. You have pretty much two options, either down two, which is a very good anti-air, it's nine frames and it's quick. If you have the right cameo assist, you can down two into a cameo assist and get a full combo punish for someone jumping at you. That's 27% for one cameo. You also have an option to spend two bars like that to get a conversion off of it. You're getting 28% though, and you're not getting a whole lot out of it, but sometimes the situation will call for it and you might just want to get a reliable anti-air into a combo for two bars. So uh, for the, anyone wondering, how do you do that? When you down to um, an attack you, as a counter, right? There's a counter. If you down to an attack as a counter, you hold up forward and block and you'll spend two bars and then you can extend uh, a combo. So sometimes that can be useful. Another option that Reptile has as an anti-air is uh, stand four. You can stand four like that into force ball and you can get a combo as well. Now, sometimes the stand four isn't very reliable. Sometimes I found that it'll work, but it kind of has to be pretty specific. So if you want a more reliable anti-air, down two is generally the way to go. You can also sometimes stand one uh, anti-airs, but I found that it's not as reliable for, uh, for anti-airing. So sometimes you can use that too, but it's not the most reliable anti-air. Those are generally the options you have. Your other option would be to outspace them as they come and then you, you can punish them as they land. But that's, that's something else. When you're in the neutral game though, with Reptile, you generally want to be sticking to your best ranged and safe attacks. His sweep is very useful. Make sure you're using it to, to create that space. You can stay back afterwards, try to chuck a force ball, something like that. Use his back three, right? Back three one for max range, try to hit confirm. And if you get the hit, you're gonna be uh, special canceling into a force ball to extend. Generally, you want to start with a far force ball so that you can always get this to connect. Sometimes if you do a, like a regular force ball, that won't actually connect. So generally, you want to start with the far force ball, do a combo extension with like a four, uh, four, two, three, and, and then you can get like another four, two force ball into a jump two, three, three into a, a falling fangs. So you're gonna do something like this. And then that's 32% meterless damage, no cameo, no nothing, as long as you confirm your hit. So that's quite quite solid, quite solid, 35%. Uh, some other moves you're gonna wanna be using when you're up close, one ones. You can hit confirm that into force ball as well. You get a full combo out of that. Four, two, one. You can hit confirm that into a full combo as well. Those are generally the buttons you're gonna want to be using. One thing that works pretty well uh, for reptile is staggering. So you can do uh, like a one, one stagger into a quick back dash, catch your opponent poking perhaps, and then open them up with a back three, one. It'll look something like this. Like that. So if they're blocking, they'll try to poke, and then you can open them up. Now this isn't like a one size fits all, always gonna work. It's definitely possible to beat this. Your opponents could uh, make the reads that you're doing something like this. They can beat you with an attack. They can outspace you, make you whiff. They could jump and hit you. There's a lot of options, but that's where you have to just start making better reads, adapting to what your opponents are doing, 
and try to outplay them. So now that we covered those type of basics of how to play Reptile, let's dive a little bit deeper into cameo options. I'm going to start by talking about the simplest cameo and the most beginner friendly cameo out there, which is none other than Serena. Let's talk about Serena. Serena, very easy cameo for anyone just trying to get into the game in general and you're not really comfortable with, with assists and stuff like that. Serena is a very, very easy, good cameo. Her back cameo button chucks these projectiles. You can get full combos from touches from pretty, pretty far. You know, you hit them with that. You follow up with a combo like this. And you just hit 35% for one one cameo use. You can do hits into this back one. I mean back uh, cameo call. And you can loop it. So I could do a hit like this. Oh, I got the hit. Okay. We're going to do this. And do it again. Why not? And then, and then now we're just going to continue with our standard reptile combo. And just like that, you got 42% for no bar and using two Serena cameos and your cameo almost charged back one use by the time you're done the combo. So Serena is very good for that. At low levels, you can chuck these out and get hits fairly often from people just getting hit. Sometimes it works at a high level too. Not as often, but it can work. You, a lot of times at low level, you can even just toss this out there on block and just, you know, if you hit them, you hit them. And if you don't, sometimes they get hit from trying to poke back, not knowing how to properly punish. Or even if they don't get hit, maybe you're you're not going to take a lot of damage. So at low levels, this is a very strong uh, cameo to use. You can just kind of chuck her out there. She can even be used at high levels as well, but I would say she's the most beginner friendly cameo. She also has some other options like her sta uh, standing move. This drains meter if I put my opponent's uh, bar to default if you look at the uh the left bottom left there that full bar gets drained as long as they're standing in it it drains a full bar so quite useful it can be really great to um prevent your opponent from getting the option to break uh a combo for example she also has down cameo which is this uh, kick. It's like a good get off me tool, which can be pretty useful. And I think it has a hit of armor as well, and it's safe on block. She also has a forward cameo attack that just makes her come out and chuck a little uh, projectile like that. It recovers very quickly, as you can see in the top right cameo button there um, a lot quicker than if she does her full uh, cameo so it just kind of complements a little bit of zoning you know toss it out there but that's essentially Serena in a nutshell let's take a look at some other cameos now I'm not going to be talking about all the cameos out here because I haven't extensively played with all of them but let's talk about a couple other ones I'll talk about striker and we'll also talk about uh, Goro. And let's talk about some of the benefits that these uh, different cameo options provide. Now, the problem with using Striker or Goro is that these cameos do reduce your health by 50. Serena is actually a cameo that increases your health by 50. A lot of these uh, cameos can affect health values. So if you're using uh, Striker, as cameo, just just be prepared to know every round you do have 50 HP less than you would if you had potentially a different cameo, maybe maybe more depending. But uh, Striker does provide some good options for reptiles. So Striker's main thing that's really good is this grenade toss that he has. It can make his stuff that is generally unsafe. Um, pretty much safe. So you can just kind of throw out this Reptile Dash, and if you throw it out and at the same time call a Striker, if your opponent tries to punish you, a lot of times what's going to happen is they're actually going to get hit trying to punish you, and then you can use that, uh, that hit stun you get from these grenades to continue a combo. And then you can actually, you know, get your own thing going. So that's a great thing for Striker. He gives safety um, and uh, kind of allows Reptile to be a little bit more maniac in the way he plays. Also, we were talking earlier about how this string 
or this enhanced dash is technically punishable if it's flawless block well you could do this and call striker and now it's pretty much safe to to be using this this string you can do this as well and call striker and if they flawless block they're probably not going to get a real punish on you anymore so that can definitely be useful um, when you're using striker uh, another option that he has is he has this little grab reset now it's not super useful i find but you can end a combo for example doing something like this into this grab reset and then you have a fair amount of time to go for this charge overhead now you know it's very easy to see so it should be reactable generally i wouldn't really advise going for something like that uh something that you could do is though is you could end a combo with this this move into invisibility call striker and now you have some invisibility and a little bit of pressure come in so then you can try to get in on your opponent do something like that which can be kind of useful the, these grenades could help break armor as well and then you can get something started uh, another option that you have is you can get actual some some mix-ups with striker he has this low if you just press the regular cameo and it's plus one on block and he has an overhead and the overhead is actually plus six on block and it gives reptile some actual mixed up options because he doesn't have any overheads in his strings so instead of doing a four to uh four which is a low punishable minus 10 you can do four two and then up cameo and now you're uh if you hit them you just knock them down right and it's if you hit them, you just knock them down, and then you continue pressure. But if they block it, you are now at, at plus six. And then you can try to frame trap them with your four to six, uh, 12 frame mid, which then becomes essentially a six frame mid because you're plus six from striker. And if you time that right and you catch your opponent trying to mash a down one or any move, you should be able to open them up and then you can get a full combo. So that can be a pretty useful for striker. You can do that off of like any string really, but the best strings would be stuff like that, where generally they're expecting a low to come next, or you just maybe you want them to block this and then you can just throw it in after like a stand one, a one, one something like that. That's generally what striker provides. He provides uh, a good amount of safety and some mix up options um, for reptile. Now let's talk about Goro as an option as well. Goro can give you some pressure options. For example, if I'm using my 422, my 4211 string, I can call Goro and then now I get some frame advantage and it's still my turn and I can be plus and then I can go for like another another string to try to continue my pressure, right? That can be pretty decent. Um Goro's main moves is this this is his main thing that you want to be using this this attack it's it's good to like get extensions for combos and it's good to create pressure uh as well he also has this stomp if you double tap the uh move you get nine percent for it there's some uses for it but overall it's not the greatest move he does have uh this punch walk which from what i can tell is pretty much useless not a lot of people use it and then he has this back cameo button which if they are ducking or duck blocking you'll get grabbed now this can be very useful because you can do stuff like this that ends in a low but and if they stay stay uh blocking low goro can come in toss them and now you can get yourself a combo of some sort so that can be useful too one thing that's really nice for Goro, which we'll we'll talk about and I'll show you guys actually, is if we put ourselves in the corner. With Goro, you could do a sweep into a Goro call and you can get a combo off of this in the corner. Sweep, Goro call, follow, follow up with a 4-2-3. Uh, stand 4, Force Ball. As long as you time it right. Stand 4, Force Ball. Four, three, two, into back forward um, four, you got 32%. Now what happens if they block, right? What happens if they block? If they block, you're actually plus. You're actually still plus. So you could, you could do something safe like that into another sweep. 
Sometimes they're, they're, they're not gonna stay blocking that long and then you can continue pressure. Maybe you wanna go into an actual potential combo starter with your with your low. You got options there. When we're doing these, you're doing um, a down Goro call. Goro has op different um, ranges for this uh, call. Standard um, cameo call puts him right in front of you. If you do down and cameo call, he goes a little bit further away. And if you do up and cameo call, he actually goes um, basically full screen. So when you're doing this, you're doing down cameo call with him so that you can get this combo. Now he does have another thing that's really good for Reptile is he can extend Reptile's death roll attack if you time it right. Now what you're going to need to do is on that third, he does three flips, at, uh, three roll rounds as you, uh, as you get him. On the last one where his head is up is when you want to be calling down cameo so that you can get an extension. And if you do it right, it'll look like this. And if you do it right, that's 35%. Now I will say the timing for that is quite strict. Make sure you're calling it down and Goro cameo when you see him doing the third roll and his head is up right there and then you'll get the launch now it's gonna take some practice but if you if you do it enough you'll get it now we're gonna go over uh, a couple other cameo options that I've explored let's talk about Cyrax and Sub-Zero so with Cyrax Cyrax is similar to Goro can get extensions off of this gator roll in the corner the timing for it is actually on the second roll, you're going to be pressing cameo assist and Cyrex will come in and do this helicopter. So it's going to look something like this. He's going to send them up and then you can get a combo. Now that's 28%, 29%. As with Goro, Cyrex gets combos off of this gator roll. And I will say the timing is is a lot more lenient with Cyrax than it is with Goro. Generally, you want to go for the Cyrax call after about the second roll that he's doing. If you get the timing right, he'll keep him in the corner. And you can do like a regular force ball into a far force ball, into a 4-3-2, uh, into another gator roll for a pretty consistent 29%. Um, that's pretty solid, especially when you consider you can mix in options off of this charged overhead or going into the low. And then you got yourself a, a pretty decent a pretty decent mix up in the corner as long as you're uh, getting it right. You're getting 29% off of the low. Off of the overhead, that's 34% with no extra bar. There is more damage you can get if you do a 4-2-3 four, three, uh, four, three, instead of a standing 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three does a little bit less damage than 4-2-3, but 2-3 is just generally easier to, to connect. If you do the 4-2-3 though, that's 35-355 damage. You can extend this further by going for that uh, Cyrax call. And just like that, that's a 42% combo in the corner using one cameo off of an overhead that now has become somewhat of a mix up because you could either let it rock or you could go for the low. Pretty good. Another thing that's really great for Cyrax is his ability to plug some of these gaps and these holes that Reptile has. So as we were talking about before, if you're doing this enhanced dash move, that overhead is punishable, but if you cancel into Cyrax's spinning helicopter, even if they flawless block that, they can't punish you anymore. Same thing goes for this type of string. Even if they flawless block, they can't punish you anymore. That's what makes Cyrax really good. Uh, you can either tap the cameo button, he'll go up, you hold it, he goes forward like that. If you uh, do back in cameo, you get a little net. Generally, it's not super useful for Reptile. If you if you want to just 
zone. Sometimes you'll catch someone with that and then you can go for a combo. He has forward cameo, which has this uh, bomb setup thing. Generally speaking, it's not that useful. You, there's some stuff I've seen people use with it in the corner to get some throw setups, but I haven't really explored that too much yet. Um, but those are like the main things with Reptile. You also can get like an invisibility setup with this. If you end a combo in 4-3-2, 4-3-2, call Cyrax, do invisibility, and you can do something like this. 4-3-2, call Cyrax, invisibility, and then run under, and then now you got yourself a little bit of an invisibility setup. I like that. So that can be pretty useful. For the timing again, you're gonna wanna wait until the claw rips out of his gut, essentially. So 4-3-2, claw rips out of the gut, you call Cyrax. 4-3-2, claw rips out of the gut. And you're gonna wanna do 4-3-2 cameo call when the claw's ripping out of him into down up four so you get your invisibility. It has to be a fluid motion. And then you can do a jumping forward two, three into back forward two so that you can run under them and then you can start your pressure. If the full sequence will look something like this. And there you go. A little bit of an invisibility setup. You can still get with Cyrax. I'll, I'll say I don't think it's as good as Scorpion. Um, I don't think you get as much uh, advantage there and as much time going in order to properly mix them, but it's still useful. And some of the other benefits that Cyrax provides can be useful. Also, not to mention, he does get a combo. If you forward throw and spend, uh, you can spend two bars by using the, uh, the uh, block button. And if you do that, you get a launch, go for a combo, something like that. Could be a pretty simple 23% can always come in clutch. There is technically a way to also get a combo off of his back throw with Cyrax. If you time it right, you can get like an actual combo from it, but it's very, very tight. And I think pretty unlikely to be hitting in real matches. Now I will say, in the corner, it becomes a little bit easier to connect this. You're gonna get a pretty safe 22%. You could end this combo, the 2-3-3, two, three, three, into the reptile um, drop, but if it misses, and it can miss, you're gonna get full combo punish, so I wouldn't really advise going for that. The timing that you wanna do when you're calling Cyrax is right here. After that third slam on the ground, wait just a few, a few frames, and then he's about to toss them over, that's when you call Cyrax. Now. And then you can get that. Now with Cyrax, you can also get some combos off of his stand three, for example. Stand three into Cyrax call. You can um, do a, a close force ball and get him to launch. It'll look something like this. Stand three, hold Cyrax. Close the ball, normal ball. Do something like that for 28%. If you end with that uh, drop, it might whiff sometimes, and if it whiffs, you can die for it. Generally, I wouldn't recommend going for it. But settling for uh, for 28% is not bad. You could do that into a reptile dash to try to maintain pressure on them. It's a pretty good option. You can do the same with this low string. Something like that. And you could also do something like this, calling Cyrax as well. Now sometimes you're not going to get much out of it, but you'll get a little bit extra damage and if they block you can maintain pressure, so it's not always a bad option to try to go for that. But generally when you're using Cyrax, you're going to want to do your best to try to push them towards the corner as best as possible so that you can start uh, mixing them with your overheads and your lows off of these. Right, let's talk about Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero uh, provides some pretty good options for Reptile. He gives him 50 uh, extra HP. He gets a 13% throw, which is 
pretty solid. He also, uh, which provides this defensive option with a back cameo, you can use that sometimes uh, to get through certain gaps, uh, and it, is, it does have a, a hit of armor that he, that he gets from it. He has this ice armor that pr negates projectiles, which allows you to chuck more projectiles of your own without having to worry about your opponent hitting you with some projectiles and he also has this freeze now the freeze is one of the best things because it provides him with the ability to get some pretty good invisibility setups going basically any touch you can uh do a freeze while they're airborne hit them with a force ball and let them pop up go into forward three two and then from there you get a lot of frame advantage that you can use then to mix it'll look something like this Now they're, they, they can't see anything, and then you can mix them with your overhead, you can mix them with below, what have you. Something along those lines. That's generally what's good about Sub-Zero, and that's the general game plan you're going to want to use with him. Basically, any touch that you get, hit them with a random forest ball, pop them up with a 4-3-2, get some extra damage, and then go into the ice, the, the freeze. Into this. Now, you could end this with, with the gator roll, right? Some people will say, why don't you end with the gator roll? Well, I'll show you why generally you don't want to. If you're doing this into invisibility, you're doing this into gate roll. You're, for one thing, you're giving up a lot of your invisibility time. You're 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 gonna be coming back pretty early, and after gate roll, you don't get as good of an options for uh, for Oki. After gate roll, you can always follow up by doing a, a, a dash forward sweep. You can follow up by doing a dash forward into uh, his back three, like that but you're not really going to get the option to, to do an overhead. Whereas if you hit them with something like this, you have 42 frames of hit advantage. You can see in the bottom right corner there, 42 frames of hit advantage for and a 46 frame startup overhead. So it becomes a legitimate mix up now. If you're going to do this, you could charge the overhead. You can hit them off of an overhead. You're going to go for two, three as a combo extension into a forward at three two that's generally the easiest thing that you can do and then back forward four 29 percent um you could do stand to for force ball into jump to a three three drop that gives you a little bit more damage at 297 uh the optimal would be something like this forward two three into forward three two into that you're getting 31 percent, but that's a little bit tighter so once again, you're gonna wanna do basically any hit, basically any hit into uh, an extension into this so that you can then mix them with this, go for a low, go for an overhead, make a read that they're gonna armored wake up, block it, punish them, loop it again. That's essentially what you're gonna be looking for with Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero can be a good option against uh, people that like to zone a lot because you have that ice armor and then you can get your invisibility setups going. Generally, I don't really like to use him as much because I generally like a, a faster paced uh, style of gameplay. So this, this last cameo we're gonna go over is the cameo I've had the most amount of experience with. He's pretty much my main cameo although i am still experimenting finding other stuff scorpion is the one that i find has a lot of good options for reptile he has his standard cameo which does these far oh, these flames you can do down cameo which puts him a little bit further so this standard cameo down cameo puts him a little bit further and then he has an up cameo which makes him go full screen you're going to want to be using um, mostly the down cameo and the up cameo options for combo extensions. He also has a forward cameo, which is an overhead that you can get a full combo off of. Can be a good mix up tool when uh, coupled with this uh, back 3 1 3 string, which ends in the low. You can do back 3 1 into overhead, catch them, get a combo. 4 2 uh, 4 
is a low, you can do forward two overhead, catch them. It tends to work um, a lot, especially at low levels. At high levels, it's less uh, less good because the, the overhead itself is 30 frames. It's pretty slow, and if they do block it, you're full combo punishable. But having the option to mix them up can 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 help you in some situations. He also has a back cameo, which is a retreating spear. Uh, this is supposed to have, I think, two hits of armor. Sometimes when you use it, the armor doesn't work. Might be a bug. Not 100% sure, but I have had situations where the armor just doesn't work. But normally, it seems like it should. Um, when you use it, you can run back in if you want to continue pressure. You can use it and stay back and start zoning. So it's, it's good, especially for a character like Reptile, where his fastest armor attack is 21 frames. Sometimes it's just a lot safer if you get knocked down to just retreat uh, from it. Maybe you're getting pressured and you just need to create some space. It's, it's a pretty good option for that. So what's really good about this cameo option is the ability you get to extend combos. For example, 4211, you can't special cancel this. You're getting 14% if you hit. But if you confirm this into Scorpion, now you can get a full combo for just one cameo usage, you're getting 34%. So that's an extra 20% you're getting. And the timing to do this is you're just doing up and cameo when uh, you're connecting that last part of the string. So either 4 2 one, one, as he's like transforming and raw going into the thing, you call up cameo. Uh, 4 3 one, one, same deal as he's transforming at the end. You call up cameo and then you can just do a four two force ball into a jump forward two three three down back four knock them down you got 34 percent so basically off of any hit that you get as long as you have one cameo option available um so which is half the bar you can call scorpion and you can get uh, an invisibility setup this is the one that i like to go for so you could get any kind of hit for example a hit like this right as long as you end this way, you're gonna be able to get it. It's gonna look something like this. I'll do it again. It's gonna look something like that. Now, you're probably wondering, what's the timing? How do I do that? I, I mess it up all the time. You're gonna want to wait for Reptile to do 432. As the claw is coming out, you want to do a down cameo, get Scorpion out. He's going to launch them. You're going to be doing down cameo into down up four so that you get the invisibility. And then you're going to be doing a force ball, whatever speed of force ball that you haven't previously done so that you can get that bounce you can get the launch and it's going to give him enough time to then turn invisible you're going to do the launch into like a forward three run under there's a couple different options that you can do but forward three run under is generally the one that i go for it's going to look something like this off of basically any combo you're going to end with four three two down cameo right you want to call him as he's ripping it out so that scorpion there hits him and then you're going to do down up four so that you get the invisibility input and then you're going to do a force ball now the timing can be kind of strict but with enough practice you guys can do it and it's going to look something like that into a run under and you can do that at the end of essentially any any hit that you get if you get a random force ball hit four three two or, i mean random force ball hit four two three boom boom four three two into this run under and now you got your your combo. You can get do this off of another any 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 confirmed hit. You can go into this. Any confirmed hit, you can go into this. So, and you can also mix them with a forward a two into the low. As you're doing the forward two, you can just call a far scorpion on a hit. You're going to lead it up with another combo and on um if they do happen to block it, they're either gonna punish you for it, in which case that sucks, but it's part of the game. You're gonna lose half of your cameo, but it'll come back. So sometimes you're gonna do this, you're gonna get them. You can go for a combo, something like that. Go for the invisibility setup. Gonna look like this. Into this, run under. 
And now you got yourself an invisibility setup. You can mix, you can pressure, you can do whatever you want. It's, it's all good. It's all good stuff. Now, the other thing we're gonna show is the combo that you do for damage. Um, what I like to do, I'll just show it real quick. Uh, back three, one, generally the hit confirm you're gonna get. Enhance a force ball. I will say, whenever you're enhancing force balls in combos, you always wanna enhance force balls at the beginning of the combo because it scales less and you do more damage. So you're gonna enhance the force ball at the beginning. 4, 3, 2, jump 1, 2, far cameo, force ball, jump 2, 3, 3, another cameo, and then you're going to do a, a slow force ball into a jumping 1, 2, gets 45%, very solid, you get into that spending one bar and two cameo calls, and you can do this generally most reliably from mid-screen. And just like that, 45%. So let's talk a little bit about the timings. You're doing far cameo calls uh, both times, right? So after you're launching with this, after you're launching with this, you're doing a forward two, three into a jump one, two. And as you're doing the jump one is essentially when you're calling a, a far scorpion cameo. So you're gonna launch, boom, boom, four, two, three. As soon as you're doing that jump, one, two, you're calling far scorpion cameo, and then regular force ball. So make sure you're amping at the beginning. Make sure you're amping at the beginning there. There you go. Far force ball. And then you jump forward into two, three, three. As you're doing that, as you're doing the jump forward two is when you're doing another far scorpion cameo call it's gonna look like this boom boom jump two two three calling it and then you're gonna do a close force ball it's gonna send them straight up and then you jump and then time it with the one two to hit them that's the most consistently high damage that you're gonna get without for a combo that generally it shouldn't drop um, if you're if you just got your timing down and it's not that difficult for 45 percent and that's generally some of the best stuff that you're, you're gonna get with reptile that's generally what you're looking at when it comes to playing reptile at a high level i hope this guide helped you guys if it helped let me know in the comments below if it helps you feel free to let me know anything else in the comments if you are enjoying the character if you're enjoying just the reptile content i'd love to know leave a comment down below like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new we are on the road to a hundred thousand subscribers out here so thank you very much for joining i hope you guys learned something new from this video and i will see you guys in the next one